Right guys, welcome now to Finch Friday, your weekly golf Q&A. And as always, thank you so, so much for the questions you submitted. Loads and loads to get through yet again. So I'm gonna pick out five and then answer them. Four for width. So first question from Owen Martin 59 Do you think the price in new equipment is a major factor in new people taking up the game? Uh, for example, the new Callaway, the Epic, uh, retailing for over 400 quid. And I, will, I would also say stuff like the new M1, retailing for over that mark as well. I think yes and no uh, at the same time. In some ways it will, because if you were to walk into a golf shop and you know nothing about golf, so you are a new golfer, and you look around the shelves, I mean, if you were to buy a new driver, new irons, wedges, putter, balls, and all the rest of it, it's gonna cost you thousands of pounds if you go to the top end of the market. And many people will think that they need to do that. If I was to go into a sport which is expensive that I know nothing about. Um, let's say snowboarding. Let's say snowboarding. No, nothing about snowboarding. I think it's a silly idea taking control away from your feet like that. But let's say snowboarding. If I went into that shop and I thought, you know what, I want to get the best stuff. You know, I want to I want to look the part. I don't want to seem like an idiot. And I want the stuff that's going to make me snowboard very well. Hit the slopes well. <sighs> Sorry, I don't know what that was. Um, I could go into that snowboard shop and I could look at the most expensive snowboard and I think I need that if I want to be a good snowboarder. The, the lower end of the market would probably suit me just fine, but me not knowing anything about the sport, I may assume that that's what I need. And then the clothing, the goggles, you know, the helmets, whatever else is needed to snowboard. At the end of that trip to the shop, if I want to get everything, again, it would set me back thousands and thousands of pounds. And a lot of people simply can't afford that. And when they go into the shop, they will be put off by it. However, fortunately, I think a lot of people who get into a new sport are savvy enough to do a little bit of research. Now, if you did that, you can pick up some very, very good clubs secondhand, which have only been out a few years, for 80, 90% less than what they came out for. Now, as a pro, I would always advocate getting fit for clubs. There's absolutely no doubt about it. But if you are starting off, all you need is something of appropriate length and a decent lie and something where the heads aren't going to fly off and you can be off and running. You can get a full new set of golf clubs, decent golf clubs as well, and a bag and balls and everything for, let's say 500 quid. And that's, you know, at the top end of the used club markets, you could probably get yourself something usable for about 250 quid. So it shouldn't be a barrier, but I know it will be because the consumers think like that, you know, they want the best thing for their game. And if they don't know anything about golf, they could look at the most expensive stuff and just go, this is crazy. And bear in mind, you're adding on to that, the green fees that you might need, the memberships that you might need. Golf is still an expensive sport and it maybe does need to make it easier for new people to access the game. But I'm not sure I'm the right person to answer that. I might have some ideas about it, but you know, participation and getting people involved in golf. I know that my videos do that in a way. You know, I've had so many messages of people who've got into golf from watching the videos, which is exceptionally humbling. But for a overreaching, overarching view on how to increase participation and what that means from an equipment side, you know, I don't have all the answers. But in general, yes, probably too expensive. A question from Finnonen Egan 10 What is your favorite club you've ever used? Oh, wow. That's favorite club. I think this is slightly hard because I'm in a lucky position where I do manage to get a lot of equipment and I like trying out new stuff. So there's nothing really which is currently in my golf bag which has been there a long amount of time, probably only my three would. But when I go through the stuff that I've used previously and the clubs that I've had in the past, ah man, <laughs> one club which I absolutely remember loving, I had a Ping IST driver, which was a very weird shape, the shaft went in at an odd angle, but Ah, oh, I used to love driving that ball. It was absolutely fantastic. But at the time I was young, I was borrowing it off someone. And after about three months of avoiding their calls, they eventually wanted it back and I couldn't afford what he wanted for it. So I remember that being like a little shining light uh, of a driver and I absolutely loved it. Oh man, I wonder what that would still perform like now. I reckon it'd be pretty good. Question from D.L. Marl. What do you think of the apparent end to the Kirkland signature balls? 
So if you've not heard of the Kirkland Signature Ball, I'm not entirely sure where you've been for the last few months. Late last year, Costco brought this ball out and they were selling two dozen for $30. And the performance of these balls was fantastic. It was up there with the Titleist, the Pro V1 and the Pro V1X. Because of this and because of the price point, it sold out straight away. People were going in there, they were buying pretty much a year's worth of supply of these golf balls, which wasn't surprising. And then there were no left, they just went. And the story was that Costco were not going to be restocking these balls. However, part of me knew pretty much, because it just makes good business sense, that it would be back. And the Costco chairman has reassured people that the Kirkland Signature will be making a reappearance in their stores. The cynic in me would suggest that possibly when they bring it back, it will be a little bit more expensive. If something sells out that quickly and is that popular, it would be highly doubtful if they didn't put the price up. Question from Emo Weir. Are there any courses which should be on the open rotor? This is a question I've actually been asked quite a lot of times and I don't think I've answered it just yet, but there are a lot of golf courses in the UK which could hold the open. There's absolutely no doubt about it. One of the only problems is having the space and having the infrastructure to be able to cope with such a big event. A perfect example of this is Royal Birkdale this year, which is an amazing golf course. If you've not had a chance to play it, I do recommend getting out there. But right next door, literally right next door, is Hillside. And Hillside is an unbelievably good golf course. I would rank it up there with Birkdale. If I had a choice to play either one of those, I don't know which one I would pick. Hillside is that good of a golf course. But it doesn't quite have the same infrastructure to be able to cope with the amount of spectators. Now, if they were able to change that, that could definitely hold the open. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And there are a lot of golf courses which I've played which I do think the same about. One of the big turning points for me is when Royal Liverpool was added back onto the roster. It's a great course, there's absolutely no doubt about it. But is that one of the best Lynx courses in the UK? I don't think it is. I've already mentioned Hillside, but you can add into this Formby. What a fantastic golf course, unbelievable course. That could hold it open. West Lang's cracking course as well, and very, very tough. If the wind blows around that track, there would not be very many low scores in. Courses such as Renaissance as well that we played, it wasn't last year, it was two years ago now. What an incredible track. That could definitely hold an open, but because of its private nature, I don't think that many people have played there. It's a relatively new course. It's right next to Muirfield as well. Yeah, there's so many amazing courses out there. I wouldn't mind seeing the RNA actually expand their thinking a little bit and get some more courses in there because we return at this moment in time every five years to St. Andrews. I love St. Andrews. I think it is an amazing course and it's an amazing place. You know, all the history is there and it's certainly something that a lot of players enjoy going to and experiencing. But are you honestly telling me that the old course is one of the best courses in the UK? I really wouldn't say so. And I think a lot of people who've played it will agree that it's not so much the quality of the golf course that stands out, it's the place which really makes it. If you take that golf course, take it out of St Andrews and put it you know, somewhere else, I'm trying to think of somewhere that wouldn't be too demeaning, on a coast somewhere that you might not know about, would it be that good of a course? I'm not sure. But as always, please let me know, comment below, what courses have you played that you think could be included on the rotor? Because in the UK, there are so many courses that I've not played, so many great Lynx courses that I'd love to get around. Absolutely no doubt about it. So please let me know. Let me know where I want to go. Let me know where I want to go. Go, 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 go. Okay, last question, and there have been so many about this, I had to field it. Uh, what about Tiger Woods? So I've got to try and answer at least one of these questions because there have been so many today about Tiger Woods and what do I think about his return? How do I think he's going to do and will he win again? So first thing to say, I'm delighted that he's back. I know there's a lot of people who don't like him, but there's no doubt when he plays, interest in the sport goes up because he is still such a legend within the game. And it's only the last few years when he's been injured, when he's not been able to compete, that people have almost been writing him off, saying he's done, that he can't come back, he can't be anything like what he was before. And I think that is solely dependent on if he gets injured. Because he is such a great competitor, and people forget, again, because of the last few years, just how good he was. Bear in mind, when Tiger was number one, 
he wasn't only the world number one playing well and winning tournaments just to keep him at that spot. He dominated the game. He absolutely dominated it. And that type of skill level just doesn't disappear. It doesn't disintegrate. You know, the mind of a champion, and that is what Tiger is, will still remain. And I'm so hopeful, I'm so hopeful that he can re recover some of that form, that he can be back to even a shadow of his former self. He will win tournaments again. Maybe I'm reminiscing and being a little bit too hopeful because there's a lot of great players out there now. And certainly if you look at Dustin Johnson, uh, Rory McIlroy, I know he's injured at the moment, Jason Day, even though Jason Day and DJ and Tiger played together all in the same group and all missed the cut, which was slightly awkward. Will he be able to dominate like he once did? I, I don't know and I'm not sure. But I, like I said, I just wanted to get back to somewhere where he used to be. Even if it's... Even if it's 80% of what he used to be, he could be amazing once more. Right guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment below, share the video around and like it. And I will see you down here tomorrow for another video. Just trying to think what it is. I'm not sure, so I'll end now. Bye, see ya.